okay? So in our, in our Judeo-Christian concepts, we do not hold you responsible for genuine accidents. We do hold you responsible when you, you intentionally do something. Or even if not intentional, if you are irresponsible. You know, if you're doing 100 miles an hour in a 25 mile an hour zone, on a crowded street, that's probably considered irresponsible, you see. And that's why we have juries to, to, to draw that dividing line of responsibility. Anyway, so those are... It was the Hammurabi Code, which is eye for an eye, two for two. Oh, Hammurabi Code, eye for eye, two for two. Okay. Well, yeah. Islam. Sure. Well, anyway, th so that's my two cents worth on on uh, the religious or the biblical connection to our, our system. <clears throat> and I have been told that, uh, that uh, behind the scenes that these are effective uh, rules. I don't know, I, don't, I never speak about them in my actual papers. Can, can you elaborate more on that international law? Oh, yeah. Well, international law doesn't really exist. Um, it's actually, they left a word out, it should be international common law. Because the international law operates just like the common law that we're familiar with. It's basically, you got to get together and have a contract to agree among yourselves and who's responsible for what. And They don't have a jury, but they, have, they assign a judge. But the judge, as things exist right now, has no more power than the participants agree to let them have power. The accused may decide not to go to the international court. So what do they do? Nothing, right? I mean, that's, I think that's the status of things these days. So international court only works if the parties will contract to it. And that's how, that's basically how uh, common law works, accepting that in the common law, if you have an injury, you can force the other person into the court. Why? Because we have a third party power to enforce it. Somebody with the guns that'll come in and back us up. That's called the marshal or the sheriff. Okay? We don't have that on the international level yet. At least not it's not operating perfectly. Well, the only thing that, that <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now anyway, um, it's proceeding according to the common law and not statutes. That's what a court of record is. The fifth one is the killer requirement. This is, this is the, the one that I just love. The tribunal is independent of the magistrate. Okay? Now the tribunal is the one that does the judging. The magistrate is the one who's up there. Not, he's not creating court orders, but he's enforcing them. The magistrate is an administrator. He has no power of discretion. He cannot, he cannot, quote, judge anything, okay? Unless you give him permission to. So the tribunal is independent of the magistrate. The one who does the judging is independent of the guy who's pro conducting the proceedings. Now, what is a magistrate? Since we know that the tribunal is independent, what is a magistrate? Well, we look down here. Magistrate, an official entrusted with the administration of the laws. Okay, not the management, not the creation, just administration. No thinking allowed on the part of the judge. That's what administrators do, they follow the rules, they don't make up the rules. Okay? And as the sovereign of the court, you're the rule maker, and if you wish to suspend a rule, you can. Okay? So, a magistrate is a person clothed with power as a public civil officer. That's a magistrate. And we're saying here that a court of record, in a court of record, the tribunal is independent of a magistrate. The tribunal is independent of a public civil officer. Okay? The judge is a public civil officer. He's a magistrate. How do I know that? Well, 
obviously I've concluded it from these descriptions, but you don't really have to be smart enough to conclude it. All you have to do is go down to California Penal Code, Section 808, persons designated as magistrates. The following persons are magistrates. The judge of the Supreme Court, the judges of the Courts of Appeal, the judges of the Superior Courts, the judges of the Municipal Courts, and the judges of the Justice Courts. They're all, they're they're all, all the magistrates. Judges of the judges. All, the, all of them are magistrates. Uh -huh. Okay? Are you satisfied that judges are magistrates? Well, now, the tribunal is the one who does the judging. And he's independent of the magistrates. Right here. Number five. So when you separate the tribunal and the magistrate, which one comes first, the denominator or the numerator? When you put a slice in it's the not, It's not who comes first. It's what, what the job description is. Okay. okay. The, the tribunal comes first. The magistrate administers. The tribunal decides. Okay, so when you are the sovereign of the court, I mean, you have your kingdom. Now, if you want to grant power to the judge to make a decision for you, you can. And that's what happens. You go to court, and right away, what do they do? They bring in statutes, codes, right? I mean, you have your attorney write up the papers. He says, code such and such, says such and such, blah, 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 right? Well, right there, you're not in a court of record for that reason alone, because he brought in the statutes. All right? And then you go to court, and the judge makes a decision. Boom, right there you know you're not in a court of record if the judge is making a decision. Of course, if you're in a court of record, and if you understand that, and if you're watching out for your rights, when he makes a decision, what do you do? Object. 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 Right. You say, I object. Why do you object? Now remember, you're the plaintiff when you do all this. This doesn't work if you're the defendant. Very important. Notice that. This only works if you're a plaintiff. All this stuff I'm telling you is only the prerogative of the plaintiff, the sovereign plaintiff. It is never the prerogative of the defendant. This does not work if you're a defendant. You do not own the court if you're a defendant. You're a subject of the court. So you must be the plaintiff if you're going to do any of this stuff. That's not such a tough thing to be, because if you are the defendant, they started the trouble, I assume, okay? They're coming after you. So you do a counterclaim, now you become the plaintiff, they become the defendant, and the issue that you raise is their jurisdiction. Do they have jurisdiction or not? And everything must stop until they prove their jurisdiction. No jurisdiction, what business do they have of proceeding? And how do we know whether they have jurisdiction until they prove it? Okay, so they, the proceeding, now they, that doesn't mean they do stop. I mean, you have to sometimes really get tough with these people. But they'll try to proceed anyway because they're always testing your knowledge. <laughs> right? They, they don't give up easily. No, they don't. If anybody knows it, she does. <laughs> so, yeah, they, they, they don't give up easily, but you have to know to object. You've got to make the record. By the way, does anybody here know what the record is? What is a record? That's all right. That's all right. You don't have to answer it. I'll tell you. Okay? There's a lot of confusion about a record. The docket sheet that you see when you go down to the court is not the record. The docket sheet contains in it the record, but the whole docket sheet is not the record. What the record is, is a chronology of only two things. What was proposed to the court and what the decision was that was made. That's it. That is the record. All the other detailed transcripts, whatever it is, that is not the record. What's the second one? The decision made. The first thing is what was proposed to the court, like a motion, for example. And the second thing is what was the decision made. That is the record and nothing else. They're in the back now. <clears throat> the other stuff is supplemental, supportive, but the record is 
What are you asking of the court? And did the court grant it or not? That's it. Okay? So, <clears throat> when the court keeps a record of the proceedings, that's all it's doing. Now, <clears throat> I'm sure everyone here is familiar with the word patient. You know, a doctor's patient. Now, does an auto mechanic have patients? No. He has customers, right? <clears throat> does a lawyer have patients? No. He has clients. Okay? Only a doctor has patients. The, the doctors own the word patient. Okay? That is specifically associated with their profession. The word client is in this, just like the word patient is owned by doctors, the word client is owned by attorneys. A client is somebody with whom you have an attorney client relationship, okay, and you can make decisions for him. <clears throat> okay, you have control of his life. Power of attorney. Power of attorney, that's exactly right. And so a licensed attorney has a higher level of attorney relationship than a normal power of attorney would have, okay? Because he can actually follow through in court, in, in the existing courts. So the attorneys own the word client. It is not proper to say, for example, an, an accountant does not have clients. They say it all the time, but that's an abuse of the word. The original proper legal meaning of the word client is as it's used in relation to an attorney. Now the word record is owned by a court of record. Equity courts do not keep records. Even though everything looks the same, they are not properly called records. Okay? That's why they call them docket sheets. Okay. They're called docket sheets. They're dockets because they're not records. Or what do they call it? There's another name I've been coming across now. Transcript. Uh, not transcript, but uh, uh, I think it's something about actions. Uh, I forget anyway, but anyway, they have actions, uh, listings of actions, okay? And, and because they're not records. Only a court of record keeps records. The word record is properly only, only used when talking about the decisions and, and proposals that are made in a court of record. That's it, that's what a real record is. And Equity courts do not keep records? That's correct. They may keep notes. They have, they have a list of actions that were taken, but those are not properly called records. Now, all right. So, the court of record is the one court. Now, if you look at the Constitution, let's go back to the Constitution, specifically Article 3. I know. Ram Thai. And the thing that I want you to notice is that when you're up close anyway, the stripes go this way. The stripes do not go the other way. Okay, that's not an accident. I select this tie based on the stripes. You want to do a close-up? Okay. Then you're telling me you're the passenger, not the driver. I should have, I should have perhaps worn a more obvious tie, but anyway, the stripes go like you're reaching for your sword. The sword was worn on the left side, and you reach across, you pull it out, you're ready to do battle. Okay? So the sovereigns when you look at the no parking signs, you know you have the circle with the stripe? The stripe goes the same way. That's an order from the sovereign, okay? That, that stripe is the sovereign. Now, if you go the other way, that would be from a subject, okay? So, so from, that... From right to the left? Yeah, from the up, upper right shoulder to the lower left hip. Yeah, and you'll see when they, when, when at uh, public affairs and they, these uh, uh, metal happy public officials, 
and they have